Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the latest uh, from Labour's not-so-secret weapon, Liz Truss, as she says she would vote to stop the Privileges Committee investigation into Boris Johnson, which could, in theory, remove him from Parliament. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So it seems the Conservatives are determined to actually destroy themselves. It'll never happen, of course. Too much money behind them. But they're giving it a damn good try. Liz Truss, almost certainly Johnson's soon-to-be replacement, say soon, not soon enough, it's weeks away still, has made a show of tying herself to him politically. She made sure that none of her fingerprints were on his downfall. She wasn't involved in the cabinet ministers urging him to step down. Uh, even though, you know, she's been actively courting support for a leadership bid since January. It's been pretty blatant. But she's done just enough to convince others that she didn't want him to fall. She's tried to bill herself as the Johnson continuity candidate, really, uh, which would have a certain appeal to the Conservatives, both in the Parliamentary Party as well as the wider membership. Because their main beef with Boris Johnson was not so much the way he was running things or even his many, 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 many indiscretions. Their issue was that the public turned against him and they were heading towards defeat at the next election. Possibly a very big defeat. So the man who claimed to have won the party their biggest majority since Thatcher could be consigning them to the biggest defeat since Blair. The Tories were losing safe seat after safe seat in by-elections. It was an absolute disaster. And we're not talking about marginals. Like your marginals, you think, well, they can easily be lost midterm. Do you know what? But seats that had voted Conservatives since beyond living memory. And all that really annoyed the public was Johnson's callous disregard for his own rules and failure to accept any responsibility when found out. So you can see the logic in getting someone who would basically be just like Boris Johnson, but without the endless scandals in their wake. Where Rishi Sunak has largely gone wrong is in trying to make himself be the breakaway from Johnson's way of doing things. There's no evidence that the party wants that. It will, at some point, have to make a break from its current path. But at the moment, it doesn't think it's, there's anything wrong with its path. It's just Johnson's personal failure to observe basic boundaries. You know, in reality, if you pay attention to the detail, Liz Truss is also making a significant departure from Johnson's policies, but she distracts people from that with talk of how loyal she was to Johnson and how she played absolutely no part in his downfall. And now she has claimed that she would vote to stop the Privileges Committee investigating Boris Johnson's failure to uphold the ministerial code. Now, there are essentially two things being investigated. The first is whether or not Johnson deliberately misled Parliament on any of the four occasions that they are investigating. They're collecting a lot of evidence and they will require Johnson to testify under oath. Although, as I've said in the past, it remains to be seen if he actually attends his own hearing. If the committee find that he did deliberately mislead Parliament, there can be no other outcome than the recommendation of a suitably stiff suspension from the Commons. Enough to trigger a recall petition, meaning that Johnson will no longer be an MP. He can stand in the by-election if he wants, but the chances are he would lose. This is problematic for his plans to replace Truss when Tory MPs realise that they've replaced Johnson with another cock-up merchant sometime next year. He can try and fight a much safer seat, like if it's vacated by another Tory MP, for example, Nadine Doris going to the House of Lords if that happens. But there's a chance he'd lose that as well. It's not certain. You know, he is still stunningly unpopular amongst the general public and even Conservative voters. Like, don't imagine, because you may be seeing a lot at the moment about Conservative Party members still retaining some affection for him and not at all liking the way he's been brought down. Don't imagine that this is replicated by Conservative voters. They're very different beasts. Party members are very often not at all in line with the non-member supporters of a political party. The second possible result is that the committee, let's say they can't be sure he's deliberately misled the House. They can't find proof that that's been the case. So there's that element of doubt. But they find proof that he failed to correct the record as soon as possible. Because if a minister is found to have inadvertently misled the House... They can't just say, oh, well, sorry, I didn't realise. They are expected to come before Parliament and correct themselves for the record as soon as they find out. Usually this would be expected to be the next day, sometimes the same day. It's almost certainly 
the case that proof will come to light that Johnson did not correct the record when it was discovered that something he'd said in Parliament was untrue. Now, I have seen someone suggest that if he's only found guilty of this, that it's possible the recommended punishment might not be that severe because it's a less serious offence, that it could in theory be less than the 10 days required to trigger a recall petition. I would find that very difficult to believe, but I am happy to bow to more expert views than my own. But either way, it would be much simpler for Boris Johnson if the investigation were to be stopped before any new information comes to light. Bear in mind that we only have three sources of information on Partygate right now. That which was leaked by members of staff, that which was discovered by Sue Gray, and that which was discovered by the Met Police. But all of these sources were limited. This Privileges Committee investigation is to be the first proper investigation into the affair. Sue Gray had very limited boundaries to pursue, and even without those boundaries was afraid to tread on too many toes, which is why she did not investigate the ABBA party. The Met Police made themselves look ridiculous by refusing to gather any of their own evidence, including the ABBA party. This investigation is going to turn up new information. The best case scenario for the Tories is that the new information is just more of the same. You know, the sort, the sort of things we know about, not more serious, just more of it. Um, the worst case scenario is that it turns up information that raises public anger to another level. And this will be happening at the same time as the cost of living and healthcare crisis really starts to bite very hard indeed. There is serious danger for the Conservatives here. So in a sense, you can see why Truss would say she'd vote to stop the investigation. Not only does it help her uh, appeal to those who don't really care about Johnson's behaviour and still back him, but it's in her interest to avoid further revelations coming out. It is tricky for her, though, I will accept. It is tricky because on the one hand, I think she would prefer Boris Johnson to bugger off out of Parliament because it's pretty much an open secret that he wants to remain in Parliament with his allies tripping Truss up at every opportunity, wait for the party to beg him to come back. Johnson's medium-term plan requires the complete, complete political humiliation of Liz Truss. Absolutely essential component. And surely Truss is aware of this. But it would also be damaging for the investigation to go ahead. If it turns up some very damaging new information, the only way to avoid the damage spreading to the whole party will be for the new leadership to disown the behaviour. Well, that would mean publicly disowning Boris Johnson's behaviour, something she has hitherto refused to do. I mean, I'm sure she'd do it in a heartbeat if the wider party membership were appalled by any new information, but this won't be the case. If and when Trust takes over, she's got a very narrow path to tread. She needs to tilt away from doing what she can to please the membership to doing what she can to appeal to key target voters, which are not the same people. But she can't afford to massively annoy the wider membership either because her position won't be strong enough. But just as with every problem that Truss will face in a few weeks, there is no clear solution. When Truss says she'd vote to stop the investigation, this is not a hypothetical situation. As Prime Minister, she would be able to bring a motion before Parliament to do just that. She could whip her MPs to back the motion. And if they do, the investigation ends. At least I'm not aware of anything that would prevent such a motion being brought. The problem is that this would cause the public, who are still really pissed off at Boris Johnson, to view the whole party, the Conservative Party, as derailing an important investigation to get a clearly guilty Prime Minister off the hook. This would look very bad. Remember, the reason why the investigation is even going ahead right now, because Tory MPs could have voted against it before, Boris Johnson wanted them to, it's because Tory MPs weren't prepared to vote against it for fear of getting the same public backlash that they faced when they voted to let Owen, Owen Paterson off. And this would be way worse. Most people don't even know who Owen Paterson was. They just know that the Tories were voting to get one of their own off. Imagine voting to get Boris Johnson off after Partygate. Way worse. But it could still be argued that being seen to corruptly stop the investigation and anger the public could be less damaging than allowing new evidence to come to light. And I think Truss is going to have to do a lot of this sort of thing. She won't find herself in a position to actually make things better as head of government, assuming she even wanted to. It'll be a case of trying to make the least damaging decision. Problem is, if her campaign is anything to go by, 
I'm not convinced that either she or her advisors are good judges of what is the least damaging option. If she derails this investigation, she might get another a, a boost amongst her party, assuming enough of her MPs sully their own reputation to go along with it, but the voting public will see it as yet more corruption. Yet another example of these posh millionaires being able to dodge the rules that bind the rest of us. And it means Truss is going to begin her time as Prime Minister with a very thorny political, party political problem to deal with, as well as the actual real problems facing the country. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.